Welcome to this short video series on network diagrams and the critical path method for project management. The sources for this video series are Pearson Project Management in Practice and Kloppenborg Contemporary Project Management. There are three parts to this series. So first of all, we'll look at project network diagrams, how to produce one, the critical path method, an overview of that, and a practice activity. That's part one, this video. In the next part, we'll look a little bit more deeply into critical path analysis and how to do the forward and backward pass to determine early start, early finish timeframes and late start, late finish timeframes. And then in part three, we'll look at the different types of relationships in a network diagram between activities and ways to decrease the critical path or the project time frame, as well as some tips on estimating activity durations. First, what is a network diagram? It's a schematic display of project activities and dependencies between project tasks. These diagrams are also known as a PERT chart or Program Evaluation and Review Technique, and they're automatically produced in Microsoft Project. This enables detailed analysis and decision making. And there are two methods. One is Activity on Arrow, and the second is Activity on Node. In this video series, we're going to concentrate on Activity on Node. Node means box. Here is an example. So the activity is on the node, which is the box here. The identifier is A and its application and approval. So this network diagram shows us the different activities that need to be done and how they relate to each other. We have a number of different paths. So for example, A, B, E and then H is one path because we have arrows going through those different activities. Here's another example. This is similar to what would be outputted in Microsoft Project or a similar software. So the activity names are at the top. So A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, and J. There is a little bit more detail in these nodes or boxes. They're giving us the start and finish dates, an ID number, and the duration, which is one day for this particular activity. If we wanted to, we might also list the resources required for this specific activity. So going through this network diagram, again, there are a number of different paths. This time we'll have a look at what they are. So the first is A, D, H, and J. The next is B, E, H, and J then B down to F and then J and along the bottom C, G, I and J. These are called the different paths through the network diagram and we can add up how long each path will take. For example, A, D, H and J is one day plus four days plus six days plus three days. So one plus four is five plus six is eleven plus 3 is 14 days to do A, D, H and J. So there are some rules for developing project networks. First of all, the network flow is from left to right. In the image here, we can see all of the arrows flow from left to right. An activity cannot begin until all preceding activities have been completed. So let's take F here, the commission approval. We can't actually start F until B, C and D are all complete because these arrows all go into F. But on top of that, A also needs to be complete because it's a predecessor to B, C and D. So in order to complete F, A, B, C, D all have to be completed. The arrows on the networks indicate precedence and flow and arrows can cross over each other. So this is telling us the order that things need to be done in, but some things as we see here can also cross over. Each activity should have a unique identification number. This prevents the project team and other stakeholders from becoming confused. So each task has its own individual identification number. 
an activity identification number must be larger than that of any activities that precede it, and looping is not allowed. So we can't have two things, for example, B and E, that go around and around and around because we would never get to the end of our project. Now an introduction to the critical path method. This is a project network analysis technique used to predict the total project duration. So it tells us the project timeline. A critical path for a project is the series of activities that determines the earliest time by which the project can be completed. And there's a little example down here. The critical path is often shown in red. And for us here, it's A, D, H, I, K and L. That's the critical path. The critical path is the longest time through the network diagram and has the least amount of slack or float or what you might consider spare time. And it's automatically calculated in software such as Microsoft Project, as indicated on this slide here. It's usually in red. To do this, first you need to develop a good project network diagram. Then you add the durations for all activities on each path through the project network diagram. Then calculating those durations for each path, you can figure out the longest path, which is the critical path. Let's do an example. We have four questions here. How many paths are on this project network diagram? How long is each path? What is the critical path? And what's the shortest amount of time needed to complete this project? Let's figure it out. First of all, how many paths? Well, first we have A, B, C and E. There's one path. Then we have A, B, D and F. There's two paths. Now for how long is each path? So A, B, C and E is 2 plus 5 is 7 plus 2 is 9 plus 1 more is 10. Let's presume this is weeks, 10 weeks. The second path is A, B, D and F. Let's add those up. So 2 plus 5 is 7 plus another 7 is 14 plus 2 more is 16. Let's call it 16 weeks. So now we know how long each path is. So which one is the critical path? So we need to remember that the critical path is the longest one. So that's 16 weeks. So I can indicate that my critical path is A, B, D and F. What is the shortest amount of time needed to complete this project though? Well, hopefully you figured out that that's also 16 weeks. If we tried to do it in 10 weeks, then a whole bunch of activities in here would not get completed. So the shortest amount of time is in fact 16 weeks, which is also the critical path. Now here's an activity for you. We have a series of activities. We know their description, the required predecessor and the duration. Your job will be to draw a project network diagram using the activity on node technique, remembering node equals box. Identify the four paths and the duration of each path and identify the critical path. But here I'll get you started. So activity A is product design. There's no predecessor and it takes five months. So I can safely put activity A here and down the bottom, I'm just going to show that it takes five months. The next one is market research, no predecessor, and it's going to take one month. So with no predecessor, I could technically start that at the same time as A. Next, we have C, production analysis. It needs to follow A. So A is the predecessor. So I'm going to draw an arrow. Here's C, and it goes for two months. So I've got you started. See if you can finish that, and then we'll go through the answer. You might want to pause the video.
And here's the answer. Hopefully your network diagram looked a little bit similar to this. How many paths are there? First we have A, C, F and J. We then have A, D, G and J. We then have A, E, H, I and J. And lastly, B, H, I and J. So hopefully you found all of those paths and here they are. A, C, F and J, if we add up those durations is 11 months. A, D, G and J across the middle, if you add up these different durations, that's going to equal 13 months. A, E, H, I and J down here, add those up, that's also 11 months. And down the bottom, B, H, I and J, 1 plus 2 plus 1 plus 1 is 5 months. So which one is the critical path? Well, hopefully you figured that out. It's 13 months. It's the longest path. So A, D, G, J at 13 months is the longest path. It's also the critical path. And you can't complete this project in less than 13 months. The only way you may manage to do that is if you can compress something, an activity that fits on this critical path. So if you could do G, for example, in three months, then that would make a difference to the overall project time frame. If you compressed something here on F, let's say you could ended up doing F in one month, it would make no difference to the length of time the project takes because it's not on the critical path. However, if you manage to reduce the time frame of F and put those resources onto G, that might help reduce the time frame of G, which would make a difference to the critical path. So critical path method helps us to understand our time frame and give us some ideas for compressing our project time frame. In part two, the next video, you'll learn more about critical path analysis and I'll show you how to do the forward pass and the backward pass through the network diagram.